Hello folks, today I'm going to show you how you can connect your MySQL RDS instances from your EC2 without any passwords. What we are going to do is we are going to create an IAM role, attach it to our EC2 instance and give some uh, assume permissions for our um, IAM role so that it can connect to MySQL without any passwords. So let us go ahead and see what other prerequisites are there to achieve this. Here I am in my GitHub article. Let us go over the prerequisites. The first thing is having an EC2 instance and it should have AWS CLI pre-installed already. If not, go ahead and install it. Here I am in my EC2 instance. If you want to know whether AWS CLI is installed, just type in AWS and you get a prompt like this. That means that your CLI is installed. The next prerequisite is having an RDS instance. So the RDS instance must be of version 5.7.17. So if you go to your RDS console and when you're trying to launch an instance, it will ask you the different versions. Make sure that you're choosing this version because that is the version I have tested and it works here. And another important thing when you're starting an RDS instance is when you come to the database options section, it will ask you whether you want to use uh, IAM DB authentication. Make sure you select enable. So once you complete the entire process, you will be having an RDS endpoint just like that is coming up here. Typically the RDS instance takes about five to 10 minutes to come online usually for the smallest instance types and also make uh, pay attention to the security group where you're putting in so that your EC2 instance can connect your RDS instance through port 3306. If you're not sure how to go ahead and do that, uh, I have the help article here. You can go and follow that one and uh, you should be able to get to this page where RDS instance is available and with the port numbers and security groups configured rightly. The most important thing that I would like to focus attention on is the resource ID. This will get generated for you automatically. You don't have to do anything. We need to use this value in our IAM role. And next thing is this value should be S. So these are the prerequisites. And once you have achieved it, then the final one is and having an IAM role and the default permissions that I want to have is Amazon RDS full access. So once again, I have created the IAM role EC2 to RDS and I have attached this also to my EC2 instance as well. So the permissions currently are RDS full access. So that step is also completed. So finally, the next step is preparing my EC2 instance so that it can connect to my MySQL instance. So let us go ahead and do these commands. So I'm just going to paste it here and if it is installed already, you're going to get a message like this. If not, it is installing, I'm going to install those packages. So let us go ahead and start the MySQL D service. And I'm just going to make sure this is starting at boot time as well. Okay, now we have connected, we have installed our MySQL package and made sure that the service is started and we are also got our service to boot on time. Let me just clear the screen and we'll go on to the next steps. So the next step is setting up our database to use IAM access. So what we are typically doing here is this is the most important uh, command here. We're just connecting to the instance up to this space. And then what we are doing is we are typically creating an IAM user here. My username is going to be DB IAM user. And I'm um, just making sure this user will be connecting with the database authentication plugin as RDS. So let us go ahead and connect to our database now. So we have setting the environment variables here, the RDS host and then the region variable. And let us go and connect to our MySQL instance. It is asking the password. So this is the password that uh, you must have given when you created the RDS instance. So I have connected to my RDS instance as a root user. So it will allow me to create new users, which we will be using later to connect to our RDS instance using the IAM plugin. So let us go ahead and create the user here. You can go ahead and change this username as anything, but I'm just creating a user called as DB IAM user. You can go ahead and change anything. And remember when you're, if you're going to follow this article, make sure that you are using the endpoint for your database here. So let us go ahead and create the user. So now my user has been created and I'm going to make sure this user is going to connect only with SSL certificates and without SSL certificates, it cannot connect. 
to do the SSL certificates, all you have to do is just this, run this command here. I can put in the username and then I'm saying that require SSL. So this will force all connections from this user to the database to use an SSL connection. So now we have done everything from the database side. We can exit our connections here. I'm just going to log out of my MySQL here. I'm back on my terminal. So I'm just going to clear my screen. So the next step that we need to do here is updating our IAM policy. So the default policy looks like this. That is the trust policy especially. And all we have to do is just update the account number for your account number and the identifier that you see here, the resource identifier. So I'm just going to copy this to my IAM role section and I'm going to create an inline policy here and go to JSON. I'm just going to paste it here and I'm going to update first my resource identify resource ID here. I'm just going to copy this and change this one. And remember, if you use a different user, you need to put in the different username here and I'm going to update my account number next. Just going to put in that one number and then going to review this policy and remember this is a different type of uh, uh, policy so you might get some error saying unrecognized to service but you don't have to worry about it I'm just going to name the policy a name then click on create so now we are done everything here all that we that is left to do is download the SSL certificates so that we can use them to connect it connect to the database now so I'm just going to download the certificate. Now my download certificate is uh, should be available in this location under this name as uh, com RDS combined bundle. So we have come to the final step. Now all we have to do is generate a temporary token by running this command. We should be able to generate a temporary token. Once again, I'm putting in the username. So be mindful of what you're putting here. I'm storing the token in a temporary variable. If you want to see whether uh, this command is working fine, all we can do is just go ahead and run this first. And if every setting is done properly, we should be able to get a temporary token. So this is a temporary token. Uh, what it does is when you give it as a, a variable, as a password variable, automatically a password is generated for you and uh, IDS access will happen for you. So let us store this into a variable now so that we can connect to the database. So. Now my uh, token is stored into the variable and this token is valid for 15 minutes. So if you are using it for a production database or something, you should be mindful of not using it for production configuration because this is a, a, for an application which doesn't have too many connections or for a single user that wants to get connected for doing some operations or some things like that. So let us go and set up our final connection. This is our, remember we have set up this variable RDS host already and we have also set our password token and I put in double quotes so that we can escape any special characters that might be generated in the password token. So if everything is done fine, we should be able to get a prompt here. And if you see, if you want to show databases to see what other databases are there, what things are there, if this user has permissions for a particular database, you should be able to see that but I created this user without any permissions. If you are a very good database administrator, you should be able to give fine grained policies for this user to particular database or a particular table or a particular column, things like that. So in short, we have set up our EC2 instance to connect to our RDS without giving any passwords or without giving any password, which is configured on the database level. We just use an IAM token and this token will automatically expire in 15 minutes and uh, every time the user doesn't have to worry about remembering the password or rotating the password. A more secure way to connect to do some uh, database administrative tasks or checking quickly something is happening or not. So go ahead and try it. If you have any trouble, put them in the comment section. We will learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.